time and space are like a fabric, uh, like rubber, like a trampoline net. Turn this trampoline net into a pretzel and allow yourself to go backwards in time. Time and space are often compared to various tangible objects, such as fabric, rubber, or the net of a trampoline. Imagine transforming this trampoline net into a pretzel, allowing you to navigate backward through time. Have you ever pondered the enigmatic aspects of the cosmos, the mind-boggling mysteries it might conceal from us? Well, you're about to embark on an extraordinary journey. We are on the brink of a monumental revelation, one that could fundamentally reshape our understanding of the universe. And you should prepare yourself as the renowned American physicist Michio Kaku unveils a groundbreaking discovery. This discovery has been brought to light by none other than the legendary James Webb Space Telescope, which may have raised doubts about the existence of time. Are you ready to delve into a cosmic riddle that could upend your perception of reality? The James Webb Space Telescope, essentially the larger and more advanced sibling of the Hubble Space Telescope, was launched on Christmas Day in 2021. This remarkable telescope now resides in space, illuminating the darkest and most distant corners of the universe. It functions almost like the ultimate time machine, equipped with exceptionally powerful infrared instruments that enable us to peer into the distant past. How, you might wonder? Well, its unparalleled resolution and sensitivity enable it to detect incredibly ancient and faint objects that were previously beyond the reach of the Hubble telescope. We're talking about distant galaxies and celestial bodies from the early universe, entities that have been engaged in a cosmic game of hide-and-seek with us. In essence, James Webb is helping us piece together the intricate cosmic puzzle, one infrared image at a time. Imagine visiting an art gallery where you stroll past magnificent pictures captured by the James Webb Space Telescope, also known as JWWST. The imagery is nothing short of breathtaking with distant galaxies shimmering across the cosmic canvas. However, among the astronomers and cosmologists, you can sense shock and disbelief. There is an underlying sense of turmoil, as if they are gazing at a Picasso painting in a room full of realist art. The common phrase you hear is, this is unexpected. So, what's causing all this commotion? What has shaken the very foundation of their understanding of the cosmos? While the official papers remain tight-lipped, the crux of the issue lies in a cherished theory the Big Bang Hypothesis. This theory posits that our universe originated in a massive explosion approximately 14 billion years ago and has been expanding like a colossal balloon ever since. For years, this theory has served as the cornerstone of cosmological knowledge. However, the new images from the JWST seem to challenge its validity, sending shockwaves through the scientific community. You can almost hear the internal questioning of seasoned astronomers like Allison Kirkpatrick from the University of Kansas, who may be reevaluating their life's work. But why is everyone so surprised? Well, the galaxies captured by the Joe WST do not behave in accordance with the expectations of the Big Bang hypothesis. They appear too small, too smooth, too old, and their abundance is perplexing. Let's simplify the issue of their apparent smallness. If we picture the universe as an expanding balloon, Galaxies should not appear smaller as they move away from us. They should begin to appear larger after a certain point, because their light supposedly left them when they were closer. This is a peculiar yet vital aspect of the expanding universe concept. However, the JWST images show galaxies that are roughly the same size as those near us. It's akin to anticipating that distant friends will appear as tiny dots on the horizon, but instead, they are right next to you, as large as life. What's even more intriguing is that these galaxies, despite their greater luminosity and mass, appear smaller than those observed through the Hubble Space Telescope, HST. Additionally, these galaxies exhibit significantly higher redshifts, implying that they are moving away from us at faster speeds. This discrepancy is odd, particularly if we adhere to the notion of an ever-expanding universe. In fact, scientists had previously pointed out this inconsistency in 2014 when they analyzed HST images, and the JWST continues to reinforce this trend, even for galaxies with extremely high redshifts. In simpler terms, the JWST images depict galaxies that seem to be of similar size to those nearby, as if the universe isn't expanding, and redshift is merely a measure of distance. However, this challenges the Big Bang theory and the concept of an expanding universe, leading to a perplexing conclusion. These distant galaxies must be incredibly minuscule 
to counteract the supposed optical illusion created by an expanding universe. Consider, for example, a galaxy named GHZ2 that the JJWST has observed. It shines brighter than the Milky Way, but is calculated to have a radius of only 300 light years, in contrast to the Milky Way's 50,000 light year radius. Its brightness per unit area exceeds that of the brightest galaxy in our local universe by a factor of 600. Moreover, its density, along with that of several other newfound galaxies, is tens of thousands of times greater than the galaxies we observe nearby. When you factor in these small and smooth galaxies, the concept of an expanding universe, and by extension, the Big Bang Theory, begins to crumble. This is why these findings are causing a significant stir among astronomers and cosmologists. Over the years, images from the Hubble Space Telescope have presented them with a challenge, suggesting the existence of numerous galaxies, compact and powerful, akin to Mighty Mouse from old cartoons. These galaxies have posed a complex puzzle, and the introduction of the James Webb Space Telescope has only deepened the mystery. To make sense of these unusually petite galaxies, theorists have proposed a notion. It's as if you're playing with a tiny toy car, a magical one, which, despite being only a centimeter long, has the mass of a full-sized SUV. They suggest that these micro-galaxies collide over billions of years, merging to form the full-sized galaxies we see today. It's like the toy cars colliding and growing into real SUVs. However, here's the twist. The James Webb Space Telescope, or JEWST, has scrutinized these galaxies extensively and found no indications of cosmic collisions. One might expect these colliding galaxies to exhibit some signs of damage, perhaps appearing disheveled or distorted, like cars after a fender bender. However, this is not what the telescope's observations reveal. Instead, the JWST unveils galaxies that are remarkably smooth and orderly, resembling the ones in our vicinity. There's a conspicuous absence of galactic fender dents. In fact, a study humorously titled Panic emphasizes that there are 10 times more of these pristine spiral galaxies than theorists had anticipated. This situation is akin to encountering a bustling highway with speeding cars, but no accidents, a significant blow to the collision theory. With the absence of signs of galactic mergers, the notion that these diminutive galaxies somehow evolved into their more substantial counterparts falls apart. If they didn't increase in size, it suggests they weren't initially small. Consequently, the anticipated optical illusion stemming from an expanding universe appears to be absent. This lack of an illusion weakens the concept of cosmic expansion, leading to growing unease among adherents of the Big Bang Theory. The presence of these small and smooth galaxies hints that the universe may not be expanding. If it isn't, this could deal a significant blow to the Big Bang Theory. Moreover, there's another crucial aspect to consider. The Big Bang Theory posits that everything came into existence following a colossal explosion. However, if these galaxies existed before this event, it implies that the Big Bang didn't occur, potentially revolutionizing our understanding of the universe's origins. Imagine the James Webb Space Telescope as a time machine, as described by Mikio Kaku, capable of peering billions of years back into the cosmos, capturing images that shed light on the universe's beginnings. This remarkable device doesn't capture photos in the familiar visual spectrum, but focuses on the infrared, unveiling the colors of galaxies so distant that they are beyond the naked eye's reach. What's intriguing is that these colors tell a tale about the age of the stars within these galaxies. Young, hot stars radiate vivid blue hues, while their older, cooler counterparts, akin to our sun, emit shades of yellow and red. By assessing these colors, astronomers can estimate the age of the star populations in these distant galaxies. According to the Big Bang Theory, the galaxies observed in the farthest reaches of the JWST images represent a cosmic snapshot from approximately 400, 500 million years after the universe's birth. However, some of these galaxies seem to harbor stars that are over a billion years old, a significant issue as nothing should predate the Big Bang according to the theory. Additionally, if the Big Bang theory were accurate, as we peer deeper into space and further back in time, we should witness a gradual reduction in the number of galaxies until they eventually vanish, creating a cosmic dark age. But the data suggests a different story, 
indicating that galaxies as massive as the Milky Way were already prevalent a few hundred million years after the purported Big Bang. These findings imply that a colossal number of large galaxies formed within an exceptionally brief time frame, a scenario that does not align with the constraints of the Big Bang theory. This is why these discoveries are challenging the very foundation of our comprehension of the universe. Furthermore, recent research indicates that the Big Bang theory may be incorrect in 16 different predictions, with the only accurate prediction being the abundance of deuterium. It overestimates helium by double and lithium by 20 times the actual observed values. The theory also struggles to explain the existence of massive structures in the universe, which, according to the theory, should not have formed within the time frame since the universe's inception. Additionally, it faces challenges in predicting the density of matter in the universe. One interesting fact to note is that previously thought non-existent asymmetries in the cosmic microwave background have been discovered, adding an unexpected twist to the cosmic narrative. All of these discrepancies collectively raise significant questions. In this context, the James Webb Space Telescope holds the potential to provide answers to these cosmic contradictions. While these discrepancies may appear to be minor details in the vast tapestry of our accumulated cosmic knowledge, they are far from insignificant, as each minor error is akin to a missing puzzle piece in our quest to understand the cosmos. These discrepancies disrupt the larger picture, leaving us with an incomplete understanding of the universe's nature and origins. What's more, these aren't just ordinary puzzle pieces. They are the foundational building blocks of our comprehension of space and matter. These anomalies cast doubt on everything we previously believed about the formation and evolution of the cosmos. They challenge our understanding of cosmic structures and the very fabric of space-time, which underpins our grasp of universal expansion, gravitational waves, dark matter, and even the ultimate fate of the universe. For example, if the density of matter is not as predicted, it could reshape our understanding of how galaxies form and evolve, as well as our perspective on the role of dark matter. Similarly, the unexpected asymmetries in the cosmic microwave background could influence our knowledge of the universe's initial conditions and its rate of expansion. These inconsistencies may even have implications for our understanding of time itself. Our current concept of time is intricately linked to the evolution of the universe since the Big Bang. If the Big Bang theory is called into question, it might necessitate a re-evaluation of how we perceive time, its flow, and its relationship with space. Consider the potential for these findings to herald a paradigm shift in our comprehension of space-time, akin to when Einstein introduced his theory of relativity. According to the formula mentioned before, this was demonstrated by Kokra and Walton in 1932 experimentally. We could be on the verge of a fresh understanding of the cosmos, which might require us to recalibrate our cosmic clocks and redefine our cosmic compasses. It appears that the universe still holds several surprises for us. Let's pose a thought-provoking question. Have you ever contemplated whether time, as we currently understand it, genuinely exists? Or is it simply a human-made construct to help us delineate the past from the present? While it's a weighty question, bear with us for a moment. There's a theory suggesting that time is an illusion, a construct derived from human memory. According to this theory, everything that has occurred or will occur is unfolding at this very moment, which is a rather peculiar notion, isn't it? Now, let's delve deeper into this idea. One might naturally assume that time flows in a forward direction. However, the laws of physics do not inherently demand this. These laws operate just as effectively whether time progresses forward or backward. Take, for example, the Big Crunch Theory, which posits that when the universe ceases its expansion and starts to contract, time could begin to run in reverse. As the universe contracts, it would grow hotter, resembling a reverse Big Bang. What comes after the Big Crunch has puzzled us for quite some time. Some theories propose the emergence of a new universe following a fresh Big Bang, while others suggest that our universe might reappear elsewhere entirely almost like a cosmic bubble coming into existence. There are even theories proposing the cyclical repetition of this process, leading to the birth of countless universes. The intriguing possibility of time flowing in either a forward or backward direction has led certain scientists 
to a daring conclusion. Time as we comprehend it is merely a human invention. They argue that we live in a block universe where space and time are intricately interconnected, an idea consistent with Einstein's theory of relativity. In this framework, all events, past, present, and future, occupy their own coordinates within a four-dimensional space-time continuum. What this suggests is that everything is as real as the present moment. The past and the future exist somewhere within space-time. Physicist Max Tegmark from MIT aptly described this concept, stating that we could view our reality as either a three-dimensional place where events unfold over time, or as a four-dimensional place where nothing changes. Everything merely is. We can think of our reality as, as either a three-dimensional place where stuff happens over time, or as a four-dimensional place where nothing happens. One, two, three dimensions of space, and a, a fourth dimension of time. In the latter scenario, time becomes an illusion because nothing truly transforms. Everything past, present, and future coexists. While it's certainly a profound concept, isn't it intriguing to contemplate such questions? It underscores the inherently enigmatic and captivating nature of our universe. This perspective leads us to Julian Barber, a British physicist with a fascinating take on time. He views our reality as a sequence of distinct now moments, akin to individual snapshots in a photo album, where each picture represents a unique now. Barber argues that our perception of the past is essentially a construct of our brain's memories. In other words, we believe in a past because we possess memories of it, and the actual concept of the past, according to Barber, might be an illusion. He delves further into this idea through his spatial theory, in which each now moment occupies a distinct location within a vast landscape he whimsically terms Plutonia. Every point within Plutonia represents a now, and this landscape adheres to precise mathematical rules, rendering it timeless in nature. This perspective connects back to a more familiar name, Albert Einstein. Einstein's theory of space-time plays a central role in our current comprehension of the universe. Nonetheless, its implications and our understanding of it have raised some significant questions. What if Einstein's concept of space-time was flawed? Would completely discarding it lead to a clearer understanding of the universe? This concept may appear astonishing, but it is crucial to recognize that the field of science thrives on such revolutions. Theories are consistently subjected to challenges, refinements, and occasional complete replacements. Science progresses through this ongoing cycle of inquiry and discovery, as history can demonstrate. A glance at history reveals how this process has unfolded over time. The geocentric model, which positioned Earth as the center of the solar system, was widely accepted for over a millennium. However, Nicholas Copernicus introduced a radical idea, asserting that Earth is just one of many planets orbiting the Sun, eventually supplanting the geocentric model. After Copernicus, Isaac Newton introduced a new understanding of gravity, proposing that all objects with mass exert a gravitational attraction toward each other. In this framework, the reason behind Earth's orbit around the Sun and the Moon's orbit around Earth is their mutual gravitational pull. Newton's gravitational theory prevailed for approximately three centuries. In 1915, Albert Einstein presented his general theory of relativity, which redefined our comprehension of gravity and space-time. Einstein suggested that massive objects, such as the Sun, cause a curvature in the four-dimensional fabric of space-time. Earth orbits the Sun because it follows this curve, which we perceive as gravitational attraction. The transition from a geocentric model to Copernican heliocentrism and from Newtonian gravity to Einstein's general relativity underscores the evolving nature of scientific understanding. Despite the current dominance of Einstein's theories, physicists persist in questioning, investigating, and pushing the boundaries of our understanding of time and the universe. Einstein's theory of space-time has remained robust for over a century, successfully repelling all challengers. A significant triumph for it occurred in 2015 with the detection of gravitational waves. However, no theory is impervious to challenges. One significant challenge arises when Einstein's general relativity, which incorporates the concept of space-time, confronts the principles of quantum physics. These two theories seem to operate on entirely distinct rules, leading to a conundrum. In the realm of quantum physics, peculiar phenomena occur. 
For instance, a single particle can simultaneously exist in two places. Owen Schrödinger famously illustrated this with a thought experiment involving a cat, a vial of poison, and a quantum particle connected to a hammer. The outcome of the hammer's action, whether it breaks the poison vial or not, depends on the quantum state of the particle. The intriguing aspect is that until we measure it, the particle exists in both states simultaneously, implying that the cat is both alive and dead at the same time. This perplexing notion appears to be at odds with Einstein's vision of a seamless, continuous fabric of space-time. Sabine Hossenfelder, a theoretical physicist at the Frankfurt Institute for Advanced Studies, has highlighted this incongruity, noting that, according to Einstein's theory, a gravitational field cannot exist in two places simultaneously. Quantum physics asserts that both matter and energy can exist in multiple states simultaneously. This discrepancy raises a perplexing question regarding the nature and location of the gravitational field. Hossenfelder explained that when attempting to merge general relativity and quantum theory, the theory tends to break down at certain energy levels. The mathematical equations yield probabilities greater than one, which is unacceptable in physics because one denotes certainty. Occasionally, this combination even produces the unphysical result of infinity. Consequently, there exists a clear tension between the two fundamental pillars of physics, general relativity, and quantum theory. Within the realm of physics, there is a race to find a theory that reconciles quantum mechanics and gravity, akin to a harmonious reunion of two feuding royal families. This quest has prompted some theorists to explore intriguing concepts, such as string theory. Among these theories, string theory is one of the most renowned. It postulates that subatomic particles, like electrons and quarks, are composed of minuscule vibrating strands or strings, which can be likened to the strings on a musical instrument. Different vibrations or notes give rise to distinct particles. What makes string theory appealing is its potential to theoretically unite general relativity and quantum physics. Nevertheless, there is a caveat. For this unification to occur, these strings must resonate across 11 dimensions, seven more than the familiar four dimensions of space and time posited by Einstein's theory. The challenge lies in the absence of concrete experimental evidence for the existence of these extra dimensions. Partly driven by reservations about string theory, some physicists have explored an alternative known as loop quantum gravity, LQG. This theory has the potential to reconcile the two competing theories but it necessitates a substantial re-evaluation of one of the core tenets of general relativity, the smooth, continuous nature of space-time. Instead, LQG suggests that space-time is structured as a network of loops, implying a fine-scale structure. This can be likened to a piece of fabric, which, upon closer inspection, reveals its woven threads, or to a digital image composed of individual pixels when magnified. The challenge with LQG lies in detecting these structural changes at the Planck scale, a staggeringly minute scale, roughly a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a meter. At this scale, there would be more loops in a cubic centimeter of space than there are cubic centimeters in the entire observable universe. Proving this with current technology appears nearly impossible. According to physicists, testing at this tiny scale would require a particle accelerator approximately a thousand trillion times more powerful than CERN's Large Hadron Collider, which is roughly the size of our entire Milky Way galaxy. While the prospect of constructing a particle accelerator on the scale of our Milky Way may seem reminiscent of science fiction, a group of physicists from the UK, France, and Hong Kong is exploring an alternative method to explore these significant ideas. Their approach involves using an extremely cold gas comprising billions of cesium atoms in a state referred to as a Bose-Einstein condensate to investigate whether gravity might exhibit quantum behavior. Interestingly, the universe itself may offer another avenue for detecting these minuscule space-time structures. Consider this. The light we observe from the farthest reaches of the universe has traversed billions of light years through space-time. If there are minuscule imperfections in the structure of space-time, this light could interact with them. Each of these interactions would be subtle, but when accumulated over such vast distances, we might potentially observe an effect. For the past decade, astronomers have been employing light from distant gamma-ray bursts to explore evidence that could support loop quantum gravity. 
These intense bursts of light originate from massive stars collapsing as they reach the end of their life cycles. Interestingly, there is a consistent distortion in the spectrum of these distant gamma-ray bursts that we currently cannot explain. The origin of this distortion remains an ongoing mystery. However, making real progress might require us to go beyond Einstein's concept that space-time is a smooth, uninterrupted fabric. Einstein regarded space-time as a kind of stage, a backdrop that would exist independently of the celestial actors, such as stars and planets. However, as we delve into the realm of quantum gravity, we may need to fundamentally reconsider this idea. It's as if we are not only rewriting the script, but altering the stage itself. Three innovative physicists, Laurent Friedel, Robert Lee, and George Hermanic, are challenging the conventional perspective. They argue that our understanding of space-time might be constrained. To them, space-time isn't a separate entity from the objects within it. Instead, it is defined by the interactions between those objects. This shift in perspective, both groundbreaking and precise, could hold the key to solving the enigmatic phenomenon of quantum entanglement. This phenomenon involves two particles being so intimately connected that a change in one instantaneously affects the other, regardless of the distance between them. This appears to violate the principles of relativity, as it suggests information traveling faster than the speed of light, which Einstein famously referred to as spooky action at a distance. However, when we view space-time through the lens of this modulus theory, the puzzle pieces seem to fit together. If space-time emerges from the quantum world, then in the quantum realm, closeness in a quantum sense takes precedence over physical proximity. In this quantum domain, these non-local connections are entirely plausible. Friedel, Lee, and Hermanic have been exploring this groundbreaking concept for the past five years and are cautiously optimistic about their progress. Their approach is appealing because it envisions a quantum world with gravity rather than trying to impose quantum rules onto gravity, as loop quantum gravity does. Their next significant step is to incorporate time into their model. While this may appear abstract and purely academic, the implications could potentially revolutionize our daily lives. Our comprehension of space-time impacts our understanding of gravity and quantum theory. As current technology relies on quantum theory, gaining a better understanding of the quantum structure of space-time could pave the way for advanced future technologies. The reigning theory of space-time, like any long-standing ruler, may soon be replaced, and new contenders are emerging. Predicting which theoretical contender will ultimately prevail is challenging, but when the revolution occurs, it could usher in a new era of discoveries in theoretical physics. So, what should astronomers, scientists, and physicists do next? What are your thoughts on this matter? Do you believe that the James Webb Telescope might provide solutions or perhaps raise even more questions. Share your opinions in the comments and stay tuned for more mind-bending videos.